a shirt on Teespring. February 4th, 2018. Wasn't just another Super Bowl Sunday. It marked a turning point in my life. The exhilaration of the Philadelphia Eagles' historic win was soon overshadowed by a harrowing encounter with law enforcement. I had just wrapped up a long shift working for a delivery service, and like many others, I wanted to enjoy the celebratory spirit of the day. But little did I know, my choices in a few seemingly innocent moments would lead me down a treacherous path. After getting home from work, I hastily grabbed a shower, picked up a friend, and we decided to head to Santa Cruz for a little escapade. She smoked while I stayed sober, sipping on a monster, thinking I was steering clear of trouble. As carefree laughter echoed around us, I felt a subtle warning inside, urging me to stay close to home. Ignoring that gut instinct would soon become my greatest regret. We had a wonderful time playing video games, and the thought of driving back was minimal compared to the excitement of the day. The drive back to San Jose felt normal until it didn't. As the highway stretched before me, the blaring lights of a CHP cruiser filled my rearview mirror, shattering the calm of the evening. The subsequent encounter was a perfect storm of poor decisions. The officer's demeanor was far from friendly, and I found myself tangled in a web of accusations. An innocent conversation turned hostile, and my eagerness to cooperate quickly spiraled into a nightmare. I inadvertently provided them evidence against myself, all in the name of transparency. What began as a night of fun rapidly transformed into a confrontation where I learned the painful truth about law enforcement. That night drove home a crucial lesson. Compliance and cordiality are not always the best routes with law enforcement. Many officers are focused on building cases, not safeguarding liberties. As I reflect on that chaotic evening, I strive to educate others on their rights and how to navigate encounters with law enforcement. Always remember, stay vigilant, follow your instincts and never underestimate the weight of a simple choice. The memories of that night serve as a stark reminder that even in the pursuit of fun, one wrong turn can lead to disarray. Keep your rights at the forefront and remember, law enforcement isn't your ally. They are there to uphold the law, and sometimes that means putting you in a compromising position. February 2018, and the excitement from the night before still lingered in the air as I dropped my friend off in San Jose. Heading towards Mountain View for a busy day of DoorDash, I felt a mixture of anticipation and fatigue. The atmosphere was thick with promise and a hint of danger as I approached the on-ramp to Highway 101 North, unknowingly setting the stage for an unexpected detour in my day. As I merged onto the highway, a car suddenly pulled up behind me, tailgating aggressively. The adrenaline surged as I instinctively checked my speed, aware that this was the witching hour for law enforcement looking to catch unsuspecting drivers. Just as I thought I'd navigated the highway without incident, flashing lights pierced through my rearview mirror. I was instructed to exit the highway and find a nearby gas station, my heart racing in sync with the whirling sirens. Once parked at the 76 gas station, the officers approached my car, scrutinizing my every move. I could feel the tension in the air, a palpable unease that made it hard to breathe. Uneasily, I admitted I might have been weaving slightly, but I soon learned that minor weaving did not warrant a traffic stop. The officers were polite, but their demeanor felt like a calculated strategy to keep me calm, all while seeking evidence against me. I cooperated with their requests, partaking in a series of tests that I didn't realize I was destined to fail. Wearing shorts and a short sleeve shirt, the chill of the morning crept into my bones, making my shivering seem like a telltale sign of intoxication. I recalled hearing rumors in California about my rights regarding sobriety tests, yet the officers proceeded with their methods, despite blowing a perfect zero. Source you on the breathalyzer. It felt as though my victory was shadowed by their insistence on further testing. The discomfort of being handcuffed in the back of a police car was unlike any experience I'd ever faced. The hard seat bit into my skin, and the constraints of the cuffs weighed heavily on my psyche. I was led to Redwood City for what felt like an endless evaluation, a part of their systematic routine meant to gauge my sobriety. The whole ordeal felt like a game where the rules were hidden, leaving me caught in a web of doubt and frustration. Ultimately, it was a reminder that sometimes, unforeseen circumstances can alter our paths in ways we never see coming. Sitting in the back seat of the CHP cruiser, every ticking second felt like an eternity. The harsh, hard plastic seats pressed against my body, a constant reminder of my precarious situation. 
Handcuffed and restrained, I felt a pang of anxiety as the world outside passed by, oblivious to my plight. I couldn't escape the overwhelming feeling of helplessness, knowing the officers were engaged in what seemed like an endless search for an expert from the San Jose station, leaving me in a state of limbo. Once I arrived at the police station, the anticipation of a resolution was quickly overshadowed by the discomfort of the waiting area. I watched as officers moved about, casually slipping into the restroom while I remained there, my dignity slipping with every moment that passed. I informed them of my diabetic condition and my urgent need to use the bathroom, but their dismissive attitude felt like a slap in the face. I tried to remain composed, but the insistence on waiting made me acutely aware of my vulnerability. When the expert finally strolled in, I was bombarded with questions that felt intrusive and irrelevant. They scrutinized the scrapes on my hands, dismissing my explanation tied to my job. The skepticism in their eyes felt accusatory, as though my professionalism meant less than their presumption. Personal inquiries sailed into my space, veering into territories that held no relevance to the circumstances of my arrest. It was evident they were fishing for something, anything, that might incriminate me or complicate my situation. The breathalyzer had cleared me, confirming that alcohol was not my issue. Yet, the prolonged process wore on as the tests they conducted mirrored those from the highway, routine and unhelpful. I couldn't help but feel their objective was not justice, but rather a relentless pursuit to build a case against me. As the hours dragged on, I learned a hard lesson. Sharing personal details could morph into an unintentional self-incrimination. As I reflected on the ordeal, I grasped the necessity of legal counsel. The entire experience solidified my understanding that the police's job is not as straightforward as it seems. Always safeguard your rights and avoid divulging more than necessary. It's crucial to have an attorney by your side, ready to navigate the complex and often murky waters of the law. I was determined to learn from this learning experience, transforming it into a cautionary tale for anyone who finds themselves in a similar predicament. Yet it spiraled into a series of events that brought fear and uncertainty. Being pulled over by law enforcement turned to panic, as the implications of simple presence beside someone partaking in illegal substances became catastrophically exaggerated, illustrating the fragile nature of judgment in such tense moments. The arrest unfolded with the chilling noise of handcuffs clicking, a sound that echoed throughout the night. Taken to a place of confinement, the facility became an alien landscape where normalcy faded away. Hours spent in a cold, dimly lit room brought discomfort and a roller coaster of emotions. The human experience was reduced to a single sandwich and a bottle of water, shared with those familiar with this grim reality, a stark reminder of the human condition stripped of its dignity. Here lies an unsettling community, bound by unfortunate circumstances, but united in survival, each face telling a silent story of the struggle against the system. Following release, the weight of judicial processes loomed large, with phone calls to attorneys a new reality. The bewilderment at the absurdity of the case danced at the edges of reason as fees piled up like autumn leaves. A downside of societal friction became evident. The feeling of being preyed upon by a system seemingly designed to penalize rather than protect. As lawyers dissected the events, laughter blended with frustration as the case against them unraveled like a poorly woven thread. There lay a valuable lesson, a reminder to evaluate the intentions of those meant to uphold justice, revealing a harsh truth. The law while a necessary construct may not always serve those it claims to protect. Perhaps sharing this narrative fosters awareness and understanding, encouraging others to navigate the treacherous waters of legal conflict with diligence and caution, ensuring that the specter of misunderstanding does not cast shadows on their own lives. Trust, especially in those wielding authority, must be navigated carefully, as motives may not always align with the ideals of justice. A personal story transformed into a universal caution, urging vigilance in the face of law and order, echoing an essential truth. Self-advocacy is paramount.